سنوات طويله كان رئيس قسم التعليم الديني في بعض المدارس في انجلترا في بعض المدارس في انجلترا الجدير بالذكر انه يعني عامله كقسيس من الارمن الكاثوليك وعامل وعاش وتدرب لفتره طويله في الفاتيكان منذ ان جاء الى القاهره وطبعا بعد دخوله الاسلام وهو بيكتب وبيتحدث عن الاسلام وخاصه لهؤلاء الذين يعيشون في الغرب. مستر ادريس توفيق السلام عليكم ورحمه الله. وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته. مستر ادريس اي وونت يو تو تيل مي وات واز ذا فيرست تايم يو وير تاتشد باي اسلام. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. ذا فيرست تايم اي واز تاتشد باي اسلام واز وين اي كيم تو ايجيبت. يس. بيفور اي كيم تو ايجيبت. What I knew about Islam was what everyone in the West knows about Islam. It comes from the television. I knew that Muslims were terrorists, and that they chopped your hand, and that they were cruel to ladies, and that Islam was about suicide bombers and very bad things. So, you, I came. I came. These to are what you heard from uh, media, uh, television, yes. newspaper, radio, every day. Yes. This is what we hear all the time. And mm -hmm. since September the, the 11th, it's worse and worse and worse. Yes. Now I left. I left the priesthood. I used to be a Roman Catholic priest. Yeah. And when I left the priesthood, I, I was feeling very down. Mm -hmm. So I decided to come on holiday. Mm -hmm. So I looked on the internet where I'd get a good holiday, and it. came up with Egypt. So I came to Egypt. I came to Egypt not knowing about Muslims. Yes. Not knowing Egypt. And I arrived thinking there'll just be sand and pyramids and palm trees. And I came for a week. And that week was the most extraordinary week in my life. Yes. Because for the first time I saw ordinary, simple, sweet Muslims. Mm. And I said to myself, but these aren't the people I've seen on the television. Mm -hmm. These are not the people that the, the, the radio tells me about. These, these are not fanatics and extremists. They're just ordinary people, yeah. but who are very religious. And for example, in, in the main station in Cairo, mm. when the call to prayer sounded, I was astonished to see ordinary men just going down on their knees and praying. Mm. And it really touched my heart to seeing, just seeing in the street, a little boy selling bananas. Yes. And he'd greet you with... As-salamu alaykum. Yeah. And you ask him, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Well, I'd never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I've never seen people in England or in France or in America mm -hmm. with such a deep faith that, that's in their veins. Yeah, it touched your heart. It touched deeply. my heart, yes. absolutely. I'd never seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. And so instead of these Muslimin being washeen, I saw that they were very, very... Taibin, kind people. Taibin, Halloween, Halloween did them. Halloween did them. How had your image of, uh, of Islam changed when you returned uh, to London? Well, when I returned to London, I, I went to a school. I was teaching in a school again as yeah. head of religious education. But this time, I was teaching not just about Christianity, mm -hmm. but about um, Buddhism and Sikhism and all the religions, yes. including Islam. Yes. So I had to teach about something I didn't know anything about. I knew nothing about Islam, except from what I'd seen in Egypt. Yes. I'd seen that Muslims were nice people. Mm -hmm. So every night I would read the books, ready to teach the children. And the more I taught, and the more I read, the more I liked what I read. Mm -hmm. and, and I found myself, subhanAllah, I found myself in front of a class of children, of 30 children. Yes. And I found my, my, my throat getting choked. And when I mentioned the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I found tears coming into my eyes. So I had changed Although that. Although you told me they were, they were naughty boys. Oh, very, very naughty. naughty boys. Very, very, very <laughs> naughty boys. Yes. But, but I've always found that if you, if you can touch hearts, yes. people will listen. And, and many of these boys, you see, they, they were Muslim because they were refugees from different Arab countries. Yes. And it was their example that... led me to Islam. C can I tell you, for example, the first, the first Ramadan I was in the school, yes. the boys came to me and they said, Sir, we, we have nowhere to pray. We have nowhere to pray Salat al -Dur. And your room is the only room with a carpet. Yeah. Subhanallah, that's the way Allah works. My, my classroom was the only room with the a carpet. The only room in the whole, uh, in the whole uh, school. school. So it was the only place they could pray. Yes. So I said, okay, you can pray in my classroom. I wasn't Muslim. Yes. So for a whole month, they prayed, And I sat at the back, and I, I watched, and I listened. And by the end of Ramadan, I knew the prayers, yes. because on, on Fridays they would say the prayers out loud, and I knew what the movements of the prayers were. Yes. So their example 
taught me about Islam. Egypt was the first, was the catalyst. Yes. Then working these, with these children really taught me what Islam was like. Uh, yani, so what happened then to make you declare shahada? Well, in London there's a big mosque, London yeah. Central Mosque. Yes. And every Saturday they have talks for non-Muslims. Information. Yeah. So I went along for information, not to become Muslim, for mm. information. Mm -hmm. And each Saturday I, I listened about Islam and I, I began to like it more and more. And the last Saturday I went, there was a speaker, Yusuf Islam, yes. very famous him, speaker, Cat yes. Stevens. Yeah. And at the end of his talk, I went to him and said, Brother Yusuf, mm -hmm. what does a person do to become Muslim? I don't want to be Muslim, but just what does a person do? He said, well, Muslims believe in one God. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, well, I believe in one God. And he said, Muslims pray five times a day. I said, I yes. Know. I know the prayers in Arabic, I know them. Yeah. So he was very surprised. He said, ah, oh, and, and Muslims pray during Ramadan. I said, well, actually, I fasted with, they fast in Ramadan. I said, well, actually, I fasted with the boys in Ramadan. And mm -hmm. he looked me in the eyes and he said to me, who are you trying to fool? Mm. And at that moment, the Adan sounded and we all went upstairs for Salat al-Maghrib. And while everyone prayed Salat al-Maghrib, I sat at the back of mm -hmm. the mosque, sat yes. at the back of the prayer hall, and the prayer began, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really touched my heart, mm -hmm. and I cried, and I cried, and I cried as the prayer went on. And at the end of the prayer, I went up to Yusuf Islam, yes. and I said, Brother Yusuf, I want to declare shahada now. So in front of him and all of the other brothers present in the, in the mosque, I declare there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Mm -hmm and it changed my life. It was an unforgettable moment, totally of course. Totally unforgettable. Yes. How has becoming a Muslim changed your life? My friends say, perhaps they're the best judge, yes. my friends say I've become a, a, a kinder person. Kinder? A kinder person. You seem very kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> my friends say, uh, now I'm kinder, I'm more sensitive to other people, yes. I'm less selfish. I know, I know in here, that I'm more confident in myself. Mm -hmm. I don't rely on other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. All I want to do, now, when I pray, I let you into a secret, when I pray now, I ask Almighty Allah every day, make me a better Muslim. Yes. Please make me a better person, make me a good Muslim. And being good makes you feel good. Yes. Praying makes you feel good. You know, now we're in, we're in the holy month of Ramadan. And praying five times a day praying five times yeah. a day. It took, <laughs> a, it took a long time for me to get into the routine. Yeah. Yeah. But once in the routine, it makes you feel good. Yes. What, what I say was, now we're in the holy month of Ramadan. Mm. And every, ev every day of the year, Almighty Allah is calling us to Him and warning us, come back to me before it's too late. In Ramadan, even the least religious person mm -hmm. wants to try his best, try her best yes. to be good. Yeah. And, and I, you ask, how has it changed me? Well, I've realized that in life uh, Islam teaches that you don't have to do haram things to be happy mm. halal things can make you Muslims are very, very happy yes Muslims are very sweet and Muslims are full of fun it's not what we see on the television in the West Muslims are very happy people. and haram is very little things very things. small things yes. everything is halal uh, unless it's declared yes. to be haram yes. ah. okay tell me about your future plans uh, do you want to make something for Islam or uh, for Islam or Iyani, uh, it's enough for you to be a good Muslim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I, I really believe that being a good Muslim, being good Muslims is the way we will attract others to Islam. Yes. So that's the first thing. Yes. So I want to be a good Muslim. But the strange thing is since becoming Muslim, since coming to live in Egypt, I've written a book. I now write for two newspapers. I, I, I write for Islam online and I do radio broadcast. Soon I, I'm going to Canada mm -hmm. to talk to the Muslim community in, in Toronto. So inshallah, this, this faith, this new life that has given me such happiness, and it really has made me so happy, it's leading me. Almighty Allah is leading me in a way I would never have imagined. And so when I wrote my book, for example, I wrote it for non-Muslims. And now I find that my emails all the time are coming from non-Muslims, mm -hmm. And Muslims. I never thought I would be able to talk to Muslims, mm -hmm. but Muslims seem to like the way I talk about our faith. Mm 
-hmm. and young people, especially students, university students, young professionals. So inshallah, I, I'd like to carry on writing, talking, speaking. Inshallah. inshallah. And we hope faith in your heart reaches uh, all over the world. Inshallah. Thank you, Mr. Idris. Shukran, Shukran, Mr. Idris.